Oh no, one of your Microsoft 365 users is quickly running out of space in their mailbox. Hard to believe, right? Since many Microsoft 365 licenses include a ton of capacity. Perhaps this user has been around for a while, or maybe they just keep every email, like me. Hi, this is Brian Riley, one of the Microsoft 365 engineers here at Liftoff, and today I'm going to show you how, as an admin, you can quickly solve this problem using something called the Microsoft 365 Personal Archive. As a bonus, I'm going to show you a great way to move gigs and gigs of data out of the inbox and into the Personal Archive using policy. But first, if you're not familiar with Liftoff, we're a group of Microsoft enthusiasts that helps organizations get started with Microsoft 365. We specialize in migrations to the Microsoft Cloud and we also have a group of super responsive licensing specialists that can quickly provide quotes in all of the Microsoft clouds, commercial, GCC moderate, and GCC high. Now, let's talk about how using personal archives can create massive amounts of space in your Microsoft 365 inboxes. Microsoft is very generous with how much space they're giving for email storage among all of their licenses. Notice here on this storage limit chart here, you know, we're talking about uh, E3s and E5s, E1s. We're getting anywhere between 50 gigs of space all the way up to 100 gigs of space uh, in the inbox. Uh, the one exception here is this F3 type of license, which only offers two gigs of space in the inbox. Um, and that license is really only suitable for lightweight email users. Uh, scrolling down a little bit, the standalone licenses uh, notice with the Exchange Online Plan 1, you're getting 50 gigs in the inbox and you're getting 100 gigs if you've got the Plan 2. And then the kiosk, like the F3, is only 2 gigs of space. Now, notice there is a line here for an archive mailbox, and this is a personal archive. This personal archive is included with the E3 and the E5 license types. You don't have to buy any extra license to be able to access that extra space. Um, so that's both for the Microsoft E3 E5 and the Office 365 E3 E5. However, for the E1, the F3, and again, scrolling back down, the Exchange Online Plan 1 and the Exchange Online Kiosk, you have to actually buy an archive license to get more space for any user that's getting close to their capacity. And it's worth noting that this Exchange Alliance Plan 2 also has the archive bundled into that. So like the E3 and the E5, the Exchange Alliance Plan 2 also has the archive built in. Okay. Now, when you have this archive mailbox, notice what you're getting here with the Plan 1. You're getting 50 gigs of extra space for the Plan 1. You're getting one and a half terabytes for the Plan 2. Moving back up, it's very similar for these other types of licenses. So one and a half terabytes of extra space in the archive for the E3, E5, and then 50 gigs for the E1. If you wanted to buy this archive license, so you've got an E1, you've got uh, a G1, a government one, or an exchange online plan one, now what do you do um, if you want to access that, in, that archive license? Well, let's take a look at this. There's something called exchange online archiving which is just an a la carte archive license for $3 per user per month in the commercial cloud. For the GCC high, it's slightly higher. Now, if you get this license, now suddenly you've got access to this personal archive, all of this extra space, uh, and then you're also getting uh, the ability to do compliance or retention archiving. So if you're a state and local government, or if you're a client that wants to be archiving your sent and receive mail for legal purposes, this is a great license to have. Moving into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, let's, uh, let's look at net how you can enable this personal archive now. So the scenario here is we've got a user that is getting close to their uh, max capacity with whatever type of license that they have. 
And uh, now we'd like to sort of start offloading some of that mail into a personal archive and creating space in the inbox. So the first thing you want to do is just confirm that you've got the correct licenses to be able to do this personal archiving. So like I said earlier, the, uh, the personal archive or um, the archive license is bundled into the Microsoft E3. So I've got, I've got those here. Um, if you didn't have the E3, you could have the E5 possibly um, or the Exchange Online Plan 2. And again, if you don't have any of those licenses where the archive is bundled into it, you're going to need to pay that $3 for an a la carte archive license. Moving up to active users, let's identify the person for whom we'd like to enable the archive. So my guy is Joe Tester here. I can see that he's got an E3, a Microsoft E3. I'll go ahead and click Joe Tester here. Now this is just the test user here. Um, if I go to mail, you're gonna see that this account is hardly used. So there would be really no reason to turn on the archive for this person because you know he's got uh, he's using four megs of a hundred gigs. But you can imagine a scenario where maybe one of your users has a fifty gig max uh, capacity, maybe a, an E1 or a G1 license, and now they're at forty gigs. They've been around for a few years, and uh, and you're starting to get a little bit worried. You don't know what you're going to do with um, you know with this user now that they're approaching their max capacity. Well, uh, well, what you can do is uh, enable this personal archive. Now, something I haven't yet mentioned is that the personal archive is turned off by default. So even though you have a license that includes the ability to do this archiving, the archive is turned off and you need to turn it on. And the way that we do that is by clicking on um, Edit Exchange Properties here. You can go straight to the Exchange Admin Center if you want to do it that way whatever's easiest for you. Once this launches in the Exchange Admin Center, and uh, you can see I'm in the user's details here for Joe Tester, I'm gonna come over here and go to Others. And then if I scroll down a little bit, notice that the mailbox archive, the personal archive is disabled. It's not turned on. So to turn it on, all I wanna do is click Manage Mailbox Archive and then slide this over to enabled. Uh, now you even have the opportunity to name this thing. So let's just call it uh, Joe's Archive, uh, Joe's Archives. How about that? Save it. In about 15 or 30 minutes, Joe is going to notice a new archive mailbox inside of his webmail and also in Outlook. Okay, here we are in Joe's webmail inbox. And if I come up here to the inbox, you'll see I've just got a few messages. But notice here on um, the lower left, we have a new in-place archive. This is Joe's new personal archive. There you go, so it's there. There's nothing in it, um, but he does have this, uh, this personal archive enabled, activated, it's visible in webmail, and also if he's an Outlook user, it's gonna be an Outlook as well. The next thing to talk about is, how the heck do we get all of that email that's in the user's inbox down into the newly activated personal archive? Well, there are a couple ways and probably the easiest but most unrealistic way for your scenario to get mail from the inbox down into the archive is to simply drag and drop. You can drag and drop a message from the inbox down into the archive. You can pick up entire folders. If you have a, a subfolder, a bunch of subfolders on the inbox, you can drag and drop subfolders if you want to. But uh, obviously that's not very realistic if you've got gigs and gigs of email that you've got to get out of the inbox and into the archive. The whole reason we're doing this is to create a ton of space uh, in the inbox. So what's a better way to move lots of email down into that personal archive uh, from, from the inbox? Well. Uh, we can use something called a message retention management policy 
And that's found here in the Microsoft Purview Admin Center, uh, also known as the Compliance Admin Center. So here in the Purview Admin Center, logged in as an admin, if I scroll down to Data Lifecycle Management, <clears throat> and then to Exchange Legacy, suddenly I'm here in this uh, Message Retention Management, MRM Retention Policy area. There's also some uh, MRM tags here that you can use and journal rules. Now, if you haven't been in this area in your Microsoft 365 previously, you're going to have this default MRM policy and it's going to probably have 10 or so, maybe a dozen uh, tags within this policy. Um, some of these tags do things such as uh, emptying junk mail every 30 days and uh, there are a few other uh, few other tags in there as well um, at liftoff here we don't really like those tags we don't like Microsoft moving stuff around in our system for our users so as you can see I've deleted most of those tags except for this one which is um, basically just keeping uh, recoverable items uh, for 14 days and then moving to an archive so if I close that what I want to do is make a new policy for Joe Tester. So I'll click on new policy and let's call this something like uh, Joe, uh, Joe archive move from inbox. And I'll just click next and then submit to have basically an empty policy. Now, what do I want to do? What, do, what kind of tags do I want to put in this policy? It's not doing anything right now. It's just an empty policy. If I come over here to MRM retention tags, these are a list of available uh, tags that I can add in uh, into my policy. These are already created by Microsoft. These are sort of like uh, Lego blocks that I can use to build my structure over here in my policy, okay? So notice there's a few um, there's a few uh, default tags that look interesting. Here's one default two year move to archive, and this is one that you might have in your default policy as a tag that's active today. So if you look and you might see this one that's in your policy. So default two year move to archive. So it's applied to uh, it's a default uh, type of tag. It's applied to the entire inbox. The retention period or the uh, you know the activation period is 730 days so it's roughly two years and then the retention action is archive so it's gonna move email from the inbox that's older than two years old to the archive but only if the archive is enabled so as we saw earlier the archive is disabled by default for all of your users and you have to actually enable it which we've done for Joe Tester so suddenly, this is looking at like an interesting tag for me. Um, well, let's say that two years is, uh, you know, it's not the right time period. Well, I can go ahead and make a new tag if I want. How about uh, move uh, one year to archive, something like that. Let's go next, and we're going to automatically apply this tag to the entire mailbox. I could also do just certain folders if I want to. So I'll go ahead and choose this first option and then next. And then when my item reaches the following age, and I'll go ahead and say 365 days, then I am going to move the item to the archive. And you can see you've got other options here that you can do with these tags. This is what I want to do though, so I'm going to choose next and then submit. And now I have a tag that I can use inside of my policy. Moving back to our policy area, now I can add tags to the policy that I created earlier. Check the box and edit, add a tag, and then scroll down to my newly created tag, move one year to archive. Now there is another tag that I should add to this policy and it has to do with recoverable items. Recoverable Items is a folder in Outlook outside of the inbox that allows you to recover um, items that have been deleted from the inbox and then purged from the deleted items folder. They move into an area of Outlook called Recoverable Items where 
In this case, after 14 days, we're going to be archiving the recoverable items in that folder. So I'll add that one as well. So now I have two tags within my policy. Go ahead and click next. Submit. The final step in moving email from Joe's inbox older than one year down to the archive is to apply our new message retention management policy to his mailbox. The way that we do that is within the Exchange Admin Center and we find uh, Joe under mailboxes here. And then if you click on the mailbox little subheader here and then scroll to the bottom, Notice that the retention policy is set right now for the default MRM policy. That's not what we want here. We want to apply a different policy to Joe's mailbox so that mail older than one year will uh, automatically move down into the archive. Manage mailbox policies. And under retention policy, if you drop it down, you've got the, uh, the new policy that you can choose. Joe archive move from inbox. That's what we named our new policy. Click that and then save. And that's it. Now one caveat to uh, remember is that just because we've applied this policy now to Joe's mailbox, you're not going to see that mail flow down into the archive right away. Uh, if you've been using Microsoft 365 for uh, really any amount of time, you probably know that when you're changing up policies like this, it can take some time for those changes to sort of propagate through the system and for you to see, uh, you know, for you to see changes like this. So I would give this uh, a day or two, maybe, but at some point very soon, uh, Joe's email, again, older than one year, is going to start moving automatically to that, uh, to that archive mailbox that we've, uh, that we've enabled. So that's how you can free up space in a user's inbox by using the personal archive feature. For more expertise on Microsoft 365, please check out our other videos and visit our website at liftoffonline.com.